that's really stuck out to me over these past few weeks, other than the great returns and stuff. We got some good news on um, the possibility of the King of the Ring tournament coming back, and also the Queen's Crown tournament. Your favorite tournament, baby. <laughs> Um, she loved the tournament. She yeah. loved the Queen's Crown tournament last year. Yeah. She loved the the great classics that we got. If you can't um, hear his sarcasm through the microphone, then oh, you should be able to. Detect you love and guess what? Her I pick, hate. And guess what? Her pick won. Queen Zelina. I hate she was Queen Zelina, the Queen's and she Crown. she and she loved the entire finals with her and Doe Drop. She loved that. The they, fact that the whole tournament ended up being eight minutes long in total. She loved the fact that Roman Reigns' entrance was longer <laughs> than the entire tournament. It's great. It's great times. But uh, on a serious note, so the King of the Ring, the King of the Ring tournament, and uh, they said that the Queen's Crown should be one combined premium live event, not pay per view. So that's uh that's kind of um. Uh, exciting for me because I'm an old school wrestling fan. I grew up with the King of the Ring being a pay per view, a premium live event. Well, it was pay per view back in the day, mm-hmm. and just bringing this back as a, a special event is um, something that's very exciting for me because I would like to see an entire pay per view or event de- um, dedicated, dedicated to, to a, a tournament. It's very old school. Um, the thing I like about pay per views like this, or at least the possibility of a pay per view like this is the fact that I think people on the mid-card could really use these opportunities to shine. Like, I think that the Queen's Crown Tournament, whatever you want to call it, Queen of the Ring, I think that that is a perfect uh, pay-per-view for what would be (laughs) the women's mid-card, if you want to call it that. I see the people being in there, like the Carmellas. I see like the Zelina Vegas. I see the Shotzi's. I see the um, Zia Lee. Please rescue that women, that woman from limbo. Those are the women, you know, that I think really could use the Queen of the Ring. Like I feel like pay per views in general, like that, like Money's in the Bank, the Elimination Chamber. I feel like those pay per views should be for people who kind of are in that middle ground area i don't feel like for example i don't feel like the horse women need to be in the queen of the ring oh well you know charlotte flair is definitely making that <laughs> she's definitely gonna be in the tournament this time around but i just feel like i just feel like it's a lot better when we can see the people who are not constantly in the title shot work their way up the ladder i do feel like the women can need to have more matches that's not constant title sh- title shot matches because that way you can actually establish some of these people as viable threats when it is time for them to have a, the title shot. So I'm excited for the at least for the queen of the, the ring. I just I feel like the last uh tournament both queen and king I feel like did nothing. <laughs> I feel like those those um rewards went absolutely nowhere. Did yeah, absolutely nothing. Yeah, Shayna Baszler should have won. I, I don't... It's like... It yeah. wouldn't even matter because what did they do with any of that? I mean, you had Queen Zelina. Who left, came back, and is not acknowledging that whatsoever. She, no, she's was my boy uh, Santos Escobar and Legado del Fantasma. Yeah, it was just like... It was just like a, 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 a participation trophy for, you know, for goodness sake. And the fact that she... One off doe drop. <laughs> yeah, she, she really beat, beat doe drop with, with a with a with a cold red, I do believe, and that was it. Selena Vega wins wins clean, but you know the Queen's Crown tournament definitely can highlight some women, put more women out there. You can re- you can re- remind the fans of certain talents like a yeah. like a Natty or I can definitely see Natty you know thriving. You can put. Uh, you know Raquel is gonna be in there. Your oh, favorite, gosh. they somebody like an Io Shirai will be great in there. And you know the thing is that we're talking about the women because I feel like with the men, I feel like I feel like this might be controversial to say, but I don't feel like you can have a bad King's King of the Ring tournament. I mean, you can, but I feel like with the 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 men on the mid card that they have, like it's just there's no way that. Actually, I don't want to say no way. Let me knock on wood. But I don't feel like you can make a bad King of the Ring tournament. And anybody who does win or anybody who does walk away with the crown, 
a lot of the times I feel like it's justifiable. Like I would, you know, we saw Xavier Woods win. I would love if we saw like a Mustafa win. I would love if we King saw Ali. like a King Ali, fabulous. He, oh, mm-hmm. Aladdin, Aladdin shout out there. But <laughs> yeah, so the reason I think we're talking about the women is because I think the women are the ones that need it. Women are the ones that need something to strive for. I feel like these pay-per-views that the women are featured on, a lot of women get left off the card. And so having a queen of the ring where you can, you know, just shovel a bunch of them in there, blend them all together and see what pops out is perfect. Now, the crazy thing is for time purposes, I don't know how I don't know how you can combine two tournaments on one show, and especially under Papa H. Papa H is going to want to give some of these matches some time. Yeah. So he's not going to do a whole, like, two-minute matches per round, you know? Right. Knowing Papa H, he's probably going to... I would... Knowing him, he would make it separated. Yeah. I think just having an all-women's, you I know... I figured stuff would just go on the pre-show, but separated I think, might be a good idea. Yeah, I think the an all-women's tournament, maybe they can do that at Evolution. Because there was a rumor of Evolution coming back. If yeah. you do a Queen's Crown tournament at Evolution, that would be fantastic. Yeah. That would that would be a good way to bring back the Queen's Crown tournament. And then you can have King of the Ring be its own thing. Um, and I think, um, yeah. you know, speaking of these tournaments or speaking of, like, having certain things on other pay-per-views, you know, we were just talking about the rumors of some of the pay-per-views that's going to get in the boot. <laughs> So some of the rumors, well, that at least that I've heard, you know, not saying that this is official, but some of the pay-per-views that they said they were getting rid of was the Hell in a Cell, possibly, Hell. or the TLC, or even Elimination Chamber. I was surprised that people kind of wanting these pay-per-views to go away, because I like Elimination Chamber. Because, because they, growing up, we didn't have, the only theme pay-per-views we had was the Royal Rumble and Survivor Series. We didn't have, like, all the other ones we had, we had Backlash, we had No Mercy, we had No Way Out. I mean, the King of the Ring was, it was a tournament-style pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. We had Judgment Day. No, you know, not the group. <laughs> we had Armageddon. The end is the Like, I get chills just thinking about that one. But, but I think the Elimination Chamber is just so unique in no, the way that it's set up. Yeah, but it shouldn't be a pay-per-view. Like, it should mm. be... Uh, something that's used on like a fast lane, <laughs> going okay. a fast lane to WrestleMania. Okay. Because I like how to use the Elimination Chamber now for the person that, like, say somebody that wins the Royal Rumble, they challenge for the Raw World Title. Whoever wins the Elimination Chamber could then take on the SmackDown World Champion. I feel like using it like that, mm-hmm. it can help establish the two main title pitches come WrestleMania time. And that goes for the women, the men and the women. I think for the some of these pay-per-views, honestly, I think they're just kind of like these placeholders until the next big, big one comes in. And because I remember, like, people were kind of complaining about, was it last year's fast lane Or there was a fast lane that was coming out, but people were like, I don't even understand what the purpose of this pay-per-view was. I think it was happening in March. And WrestleMania yeah, was yeah. in April. It was too close together. Yeah, it was a little close, but I feel like people, you know, I feel like they're just using it as yeah, placeholders. Cause, no, because then they had they had Elimination Chamber, which was at uh, Saudi. Mm-hmm. Because you remember, I think Bianca won, right? Mm-hmm. And then they had Alexa Bliss come back for that night. And yeah. Then Bianca just buried her. <laughs> we like the EST. Mm-hmm. Bianca t- took took her out. And um, yeah, that was um, that was like the last Elimination Chamber event. But I think having these pay per views named after matches, the only time it really worked was Royal Rumble. And I guess if you want to keep Money in the Bank, I could see them possibly keeping Money in the Bank. Because I think Money, money in the Bank should stay. Money in the Bank is um, a part of the Big Five now, so I don't think they would take away Money in the Bank. But like a Extreme Rules, a Hell in a Cell, or TLC, tables, ladders, chairs, and stairs. You can get rid of those. You can get rid of those. You know, you can bring back the Armageddon's, the No Way Outs, the No Mercies, the Vengeance, the Bad Bloods. You can bring back all these pay per views that we know and love. So, yeah. Let us know what pay per view you think should stay and which one needs the boot. Drop it down below.